than a Michael. But knowing you, you probably know who I'm I will probably need it. <laughs> I'll just, I'll just have I preach in the park without a mic. Kind of but I had a megaphone yesterday. A megaphone? Yeah. <laughs> Praise, Praise God. God. Uh, reach your hand towards me. Father, thank you, Lord, for what we're about to receive. Yes, Father. Thank you, open our hearts to yes. receive the word, Lord, as it's brought forth with the ancient and the anointing of the Holy thank Spirit. You. In Jesus' name. And God's thank people said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Glory, glory, glory. Well, I'm going to say the scripture that God gave me first, and then he gave me this little book I have had for about, oh, about 35 years. And this little book, when I'm needing something from God, he always needs something in this book, and it's always right on time. Don't take away from the Bible, but sometimes he gives me some little nuggets. But the verse we're going to use tonight is this, take us, the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines. For our vines have tender grapes. Okay? And I'll get more into that. And I'm going to read this real quick. God sent me here, told me to call Brother John. And I work a little bit different than y'all may know the ministers. I go by the leading of the Spirit. So if the Spirit tells me something about you, it's the Spirit. It's not me, so take it up with Him, okay? Sometimes He'll have me give you a correction. Sometimes it's healing. Sometimes it's deliverance. Sometimes you need to let go of bitterness or unforgiveness to get your healing. So tonight... I don't know what he's got in store, but those are the main things that he ha had me come here for because there are there there are some here, at least five, he told me, that want to go up higher in him. They want a higher walk in him. But I want to tell you this, that for that higher walk, you will pay the price. Don't let anybody ever tell you any differently. For that walk, you will pay the price. So, but there are five people, God told me there were five people in here that are sold out to the Father. They're sold out. And they want to go up higher. They want everything God has. And so there will be a partition tonight. There will be a deliverance if you choose to let go of whatever you're holding on to, to let God let, set you free. Amen? Amen. So, Amen. tonight, you let go and let God. Okay? Amen. Hallelujah. I said, I got up this morning, and I've been up since about 4 a.m. That's just how I am when I preach. I, 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 I can't rest. I want to get everything that God's got for me to say. Okay? And sometimes... In doing that, he makes you go without. I've been fasting since yesterday morning, and I'm ready to eat. My plate's up there on the icebox. I'm <laughs> ready to eat it. So, but I wanted y'all to get what God had for y'all tonight. Amen? Amen? And God is doing something tremendously in the, in the land today right now. I, I mean... From going from maybe getting five people that would like my videos on Facebook to 479 shares and likes in one day. And I'm like, okay, God, what's up? What's up, God? You're doing something. I had my videos shared from being in the park yesterday. We went out and fed the homeless, and I did some preaching. And I'm going to tell you something, saints of God. If you're not ready for it, you might as well sit down. Because we had an encounter yesterday in the park. After we got done ministering and, and praying for everybody and everybody ate, I made a big old pot of chili and everybody was eating and night. We gave out blankets and socks and all that kind of stuff. And so I did some ministering in the church. Well, as I was walking off, lo and behold, a lady came up and she was being blessed. And she had a lot of demons in her. I'm going to tell you that right now. So she's over here, blum, 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 
And I'm like, whoa, okay, yeah, you see that, sister? Because I had a new sister with me yesterday helping me, and she's like, oh, yeah. And uh, so she's standing over here, and my son, he, thank you, Jesus, he's, he's got the sermon. He don't even know it, but he says, okay, it's time to get the kids and go. So he gets the kids and loads up and goes, and this lady is wigging out. And she's getting closer and closer to me. And so you got to be careful. you got to be really, really careful and not let them touch you. And why? Because them demons yeah. can jump on you. Yeah. Amen? Indeed. They can jump on you. So I'm standing there, and this other lady's over here, and she's, she's looking at me like, you know, you see what I see? And I'm like, yeah, I see what you see. And God all of a sudden told me to put my hands on her. Put my hands. And see, you don't touch. Because the Bible says, touch not my, touch not anybody suddenly unless he tells you to. Because them spirits can jump on me. Amen? So I said, okay, God. So my hand just went woof on her head. And she started squirming, man. She started going nuts. And it wasn't her, it was those demons in her. Amen? So God wanted me to come today because... There's some of y'all in here that want to get on fire for God. You are Brother John's backbone. You will do whatever he asks or say. And he calls you up on the phone. He says, that, that, that. You said, right there, brother, I'm there. Am I right? Am I right, Brother John? Amen, amen, This is what God showed me in the spirit. I don't know a lot of y'all. I know a few of y'all's faces. But God said there's five, at least five, if not more, that are dedicated to Brother John in this ministry. And whatever Brother John says or his wife says, I need of, you're there. Oh, yes. Amen? But God wants you to go up higher. Woo! Higher. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In the form of higher the Spirit. Higher in Him. Yes, Lord. He said, get the foxes out of your life. Because you have tender grace. Your fruit. Your fruit. Your fruit. You, you have to bear your fruit. You, and it must be right Lord, and ready. Lord. Amen? But the foxes, the foxes spoil it. Do you understand what that means? Sin. Sin. Little things in your life that you might think, oh, this ain't no big deal. It's not no big deal. Somewhat I said a cuss word. Somewhat. It's not pleasing to God. He wants you to live a holy, pure, righteous life. Amen. 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 He wants you to get your house in order and be clean. Hallelujah. Because there's much work to be done. The harvest is ready. But the true labor is for you. Amen. And so, we, so we've got to go through much fire. Fire. Fire does what? It burns it. Burns it. Purifies it. Cleanses Amen. So we're going to go through the fire. We're going to go through the persecution. And you might even be killed. God's already told me, you can be killed, Tim. And I'm like, okay, God, bring it on. Bring it on. I tell the devil, come on, devil. I'm ready for you. Because I'm ready to kick butt. You know why? Because I know who's inside of me. I know the authority that's inside of me. I know the power so I must rise up and be a general in God's army. Yes, yes, yes. So Amen. if you're in God's army, guess what? You're going to start out as a private. Yes, yes. Amen? You're going to start out as a private. But if you want to be a general, you're going to pay the price. Amen? You're going to pay the price. You're going to go through it. So tonight, before you come up here and I pray for you, you better make sure that you want to really make this commitment with God. It ain't fun and games. It ain't playing around. It's time to get real. It's time to get real. Because God is rising an army. And if you are not equipped, guess what? You're going to fall and you're going to die. Plain and simple. Just like the army. You go out in the battlefield if you ain't equipped, guess what? Have you ever been in the service? No. Has anybody ever here in here and been in the service? Nobody here has been in the service. 
Well, I've never been in this service, but I know enough to know. I've seen enough movies. If you ain't equipped, guess what? You're going to die. You're going to fall flat on your face and you're going to die. Amen? So I said, God, this morning about 4 o'clock, I said, God, I said, what do you want me to bring your people? What do you want me to bring your people? And he was telling me about the foxes. The little bitty things, the little bitty things that keep you and him separated. Amen? So he's wanting you to examine yourselves tonight and say, God, I'm going to let it go. I'm getting it out of my life. I'm going to do what you tell me to do. I want to go to the next level in my walk in you. Because I take my walk seriously, y'all. Seriously. And I've had to get a lot of stuff out of my life. Amen. Now, I'm going to read this and then I'm going to tell y'all a little bit about my testimony. Amen. Hallelujah. It says, Household Salvation. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known your faithfulness to all generations. Psalms 89 1. Oh, my child. I have loved you with an everlasting love, and with strong cords I have bound you to myself. He's talking to the ones that are serious. He's talking to the ones that have got their hearts set on him. He's talking to the ones that have got their ears pointed to him. And they know their father's voice, I'm telling you. Hallelujah. In the day of the adversary, I have been your refuge. And in the hour of need, I have held staff. I have been your refuge, and in the hour of need, I have held you up, and you have found your strength in me. You have seen my goodness on the right hand and on the left hand. You have beheld my power and my glory. You've seen it. You've seen it. You've seen God work. You've seen miracles. You've seen him deliver. You've seen him set free. Yes. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So I ain't talking to just nobodies. Uh -huh. Amen. And if you want to know more, he's telling you tonight, get more. Get deeper. Get in there. Get it. Yes. Get it. Glory to God. My power and my glory have not been hidden from you. I have blessed you out of the abundance of heaven and have not withheld from you what your heart has desired. Huh. My desire is to preach the gospel in Grand Junction. Amen. And to set the captive free. Amen. And to see many souls come into the kingdom of God. And I want to walk in the hundredfold ministry. Whoa. I want to see signs and miracles. My Bible tells me that I can do the same thing as Jesus did and greater. Yes. So where are we falling yes. to the side? Why ain't we getting it? Why ain't we walking on the water? Why? Why is it not happening? Why are people not getting up out of wheelchairs? Why? But I'm going to tell you something. God showed me. God showed me. The more I dig in, the more I'm going to see. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to see arms restored. I'm going to see legs restored. I'm going to see people get up out of wheelchairs. Hallelujah. Because it's something I've been asking for for a long time. Yeah. Amen? Amen. But you gotta pay the price. It ain't free. It ain't easy. It don't happen overnight. Amen? Glory to God. So, renew your energies and know that I am working with you. Hello? He's not working against you, He's working for you. Get in there and get with Him. Listen for His voice. He said, my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. So if you can't hear him, fine tune your hearing. And how do they know if they don't hear it? Hear what? The word from a preacher. Amen? Amen. You don't know. You got to hear it. Amen? Hallelujah. For surely a light will shine out of the darkness. Hallelujah. And the faith that you have. Hello. I'm 
have to obey. You just have to listen for the where the where there is liberty, where the Lord is, there is liberty. Mm -hmm. Amen. So I knew when I called Brother John, he go, "Come on," because I hear the voice of the Father, and He has something to say to you. And then it's very important to me. I have to get it right. You have to get it right. You have to get it right. Why? Because there are many souls out there. And you will be accountable. You will be accountable. Do you know that I am accountable standing right here in front of you? I am accountable to my father. So I don't get behind this sacred pulpit unless he tells me to. Yeah. Because if he tells me to, then I'm qualified. Amen? <coughs> so your faith will not, let me back up. For new is your energies. And know that I am working with you. For surely a light will shine out of the darkness. And the faith you have exercised through the years, come on. Through the years, Brother John, will be rewarded 100 fold. Mm -hmm. yeah. 100 fold! Yes. 100 fold! Yes. Oh, yes. Everything you do for the Father. Excuse me, I'm spitting, I'm preaching. <laughs> That's why I'm not Hallelujah. I do spit, I'm sorry. Glory to God. But it will return. Everything that you have done for God is not in vain. Amen. Everything you do for God, not man, for God, He's going to bless you. You're laying up your treasures in heaven, hallelujah. But He's going to bless us here on earth. It's not all name it and claim it. You know, it's not. But God does give you the desires of your yeah. heart. But, but, what does the Bible say? It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and then all these things shall be added unto you. Indeed. So you got to get with the program. You want it? You got you to gotta go to him first. He gives you everything you have anyway. Everything that I have, he owns. He can take it just like that. Yes. And he has. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So your faith will be turned to sight. For you will see with your eyes and hear with your ears and rejoice in your heart over what will come to pass. Oh. I know and I know that I know what he showed me a long time ago. It's going to come to pass. There's going to be great revival. And whether you know it or not, you are in the end days. And this is the end days ministries. You're in the end days. There's much work to be done. The harvest But the laborers are few. They're few. Hallelujah. Surely my love is deep and abiding. Constant and tender. I have no change. For thought, nations rise against nations. Hello, he's talking. And the war break out into a universal holocaust. Although humanity in its folly dashes itself to bits against the wall of the invisible. You're fighting against the devil. Not flesh and blood. Not. The Bible says we war not against flesh and blood. It's principalities and things in the air. Demonic forces. The spiritual realm. God wants you to get more familiar with things that are going on because it's a spiritual battle. It's a spiritual fight that we're fighting every day. It's not your brother next door accusing you of this or that 
or the lady in the grocery store accusing you of this or that. It's the devil behind that person. Mm -hmm. Trying to get at you. Yeah. Amen? Because I'm telling you something. No sin. No sin. No sin. No sin. No sin of any kind, any way, shape, or form will enter into heaven. None. Zero. So it's time to get it out of your life. It's time to get over your fleshly desires. It's time to get up. Die to this flesh. It says to die daily. Daily. We have to say, oh, flesh. Oh. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to the bars. I'm not going to smoke weed. I'm not going to smoke crack. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. Amen? Amen? It's getting your life right. Stay right. Stay humble before God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. My heart is still tender. My thoughts towards you are still thoughts of loving kindness. I look upon you with a deeper love than ever before. Why? Because your heart's hungry for more of Him. Yes. For more of Him. That is my desire. That is my every waking thing. And people say, oh, you get crazy about this. You're not doing it all the time. My mind goes all the time. Thank you, Jesus. I'm praying for more God for this person. That person. It never stops. I'm telling you, until I'm just dead dog crashed out, God crashes me out my mind. Constantly. Amen? Amen. My heart's still tender. My thoughts towards you are still thoughts of loving kindness. I look upon you with a deeper love than ever before. As the bridegroom anticipates the approach of the wedding. Ooh, Jesus. As the bridegroom approaches to the approaching wedding. We're the brides, y'all. We're the bride. The bride must get herself ready and born. Holy before God. Amen? Pure and righteous. Hallelujah. Beautiful before God. And we must come together. Stop all this fighting and arguing with everybody in every denomination. We gotta come together. We gotta come together. How can we be the bride if we're fighting with one another? Right. Racist and all that stuff. That God is not pleased. He's very unhappy. Though you, let's say, as the bride from the process of the the wedding, make his last minute preparations. He's wanting you to prepare. He's wanting you to prepare. And long for the hours of fulfillment. So does my heart yearn for you. My bride, my beloved, though you see terror on every hand, look at what's going on all around. You cannot tell me God did not want me to tell you all this stuff. Amen? Though you see terror on every hand, only with your eyes will you look and see the reward of the wickedness. We're going to see it. We're going to see the devil get his butt kicked. Amen. My Bible says that, and I'm waiting for it. Amen. I shall preserve you. Preserve you. Let me ask y'all: Do I look sixty? Do I look sixty? No. He will preserve you. There's men and women in the Bible that were hundreds of years old, and they didn't even look like it. Hundreds of years old. So if you're living a godly life and you got your eyes on him, guess what he's gonna make you look? He ain't gonna make you look old and haggard and ragged. Men, look at her, she's beautiful. Pastor's wife, she's beautiful. Beautiful. Why? She's serving God. Look at Brother John, man, they're awesome. They're awesome. And God loves them. And they don't know it. But God is gonna open up the windows of heaven for them. Blessings are coming their way. They're coming my way. I've been waiting a long time, but it's coming. Why? Because my God is not a liar. And if he said he was going to do it, guess what? He's going to do it. Yeah. Amen? Yes. I just have to be patient and faithful and wait on him. Amen? Glory to God. I shall preserve you and keep you, and you shall walk with me in white. 
white. White. That's pure and holy. Pure and holy. They're up there. I want to share my testimony real quick, and I don't know who it's for, but uh, I came from a very decent family. My daddy molested me when I was young. My uncle molested me. It's a normal thing. Didn't know it was bad. Didn't know any different. Uh, there's a lot of witchcraft in my family. Didn't know about until after my mom died. So there's witchcraft. There's all this stuff. When I was 16 years old, I left home. Because I didn't want it anymore. I was tired of my daddy messing with me. I was just tired of it. I was tired of every day I heard, you're stupid, you're a dummy, you'll never amount to anything. You're, I regret the day you were born. That's what I heard from my father. I left home when I was 16 years old. I got out and I said, okay, and my daddy would sit me down and say, you're a whore, you're a slut, you'll never, never amount to anything. I didn't even know what those words were. I didn't even know what they were. So I left home when I was 16 years old, went out and I said, okay, I'm going to be a slut and I'm going to be a whore, and that's what I was. I worked in a, in a bowling alley in Houston, Texas, 16 years old, got a job as a bartender, a bartender, okay? And I met a man, came in, he was much older than me. And he kept being persistent, persistent, and he'd come night after night, and I finally went out with him. The worst mistake of my life. That man held me in prison for almost three years. And, and that's what I was as a prostitute. If I didn't do it, I got beat. If I didn't have any money, I got beat. If I didn't stay high and drugged up, I got beat. Okay? One day, one of I went out to get supplies, and I escaped. In the middle of Houston, I'm going to tell you how God works. In the middle of Houston, here I am selling my body to survive. Doing every kind of drug you can think of. I was hooked on uh, PCP and Quaaludes and every kind of downer. I'd be down all day long and high all night long and snort some coke and do this and do that. And one night, when I escaped, I went to a friend's house. And I didn't know until after the fact she was a witch. But she helped me. <laughs> tell you how God works. <laughs> okay. Which is helped me twice already. <laughs> but anyway, well, I ministered to him. So anyway, I end up in this house and it's full of Saudi Arabian guys, man. Okay. So I'm in this house and lo and behold, knock on the door. Boom, boom, boom. It's my best friend, prophet of God. God spoke to her and says, find Tammy. She says, oh God, where? She's in Houston. That woman found me in the middle of Houston. I'm gonna tell you how my God works. He told her exactly where I was. She knocked on the door and says, Tammy. And he said, how did she know you were here? I'm gonna tell you what, she took me home. I still was not, still didn't know quite enough about God. So I ran here, ran there, went back out to the street, did drugs, prostitute, because that's the only way I knew how to survive. Hitchhike all over the United States, truck driving, selling my body, doing everything you can think of. And then I, God started ministering to me. God spoke to me. He spoke to me. It's clear as a bell. He said, your mama's sick. I'm dying. And I said, God, here I was out here just living it up, partying, staying high all the time. But I was hiding from the hurt and the pain. And I was running and running and running and running. But I didn't know what I was running for. I didn't know what I was running to. I didn't know anything about Jesus. Even when my best friend found me in the middle of Houston, and she talked to me about Jesus, but I just wasn't getting it. Why? Because there was so much hurt and pain and resentment and bitterness in my heart. And then I, I met, I, I, I could go all night long with what's happened to me, but I'll shorten it up. But I went through a lot of things, guys. And I met my first husband, Chris's daddy. Didn't know it until after I got a divorce. He was in the cult. You see, there's things that happen in your life and cycles that happen in your life. Why? Because it's familiar spirits that are being passed on from generation to generation to generation. 
And then you next, next thing you know, you're like, why is all this stuff happening to me? Because it's a spirit that keeps going on and on and on. So God had to get a hold of me. He had to get a hold of me. I almost died five times. I took five quail eggs, jumped off a diving board, and jumped in a swimming pool. And three days later, I woke up, and they was like, man, you died. You died. God had other plans. I've been run over by a car three times before the guy stopped enough for me to get the car off of me. They pronounced me dead at the scene. I was in a car accident in 1992, and I've had three back surgeries since then. And they've told me that you're going to be on a morphine pump and in the wheelchair for the rest of your life. And God spoke to me and he says, trust me and you will walk. Yes. I was paralyzed from here down mm -hmm. for a year. My husband had to carry me to the bathroom and take give me a bath. My mother had to come over every day or every other day where she could because she was working too. But God spoke to me and he says, trust me. Believe in me. You will walk. And he showed me him carrying me. Him carrying me. And I said, okay, God, I'm going to tell you now, I've had shoebox full of medicine. They had me on every kind of pill that you can think of. I was on morphine. Vicodin, Soma, fitting on patches, all at once. All at once. And I felt worse than I did before the accident. So see, that tra it's a trap. It keeps you trapped up. It keeps you all bo in bondage. You're going to die. You That's what he wants you to do. The devil wants to kill you, steal you, destroy you. Amen? So I started trusting God, and I started walking. I started walking. Uh, yeah, I had a walker, and then I had a cane, but glory to God, I'm walking today. And I ain't taking none of them pills. I ain't taking none of them. Every now and then I'll have to take them. I still have aches and pains. But I'm going to tell you what, he's my strength. Every day I thank you. Thank you, Father, for giving me the strength. Thank you, Father, I'm not in a wheelchair. Thank you, Lord God, I'm not permanently bound to a wheelchair. And I'm walking because I trusted in you. Yes. Oh, yes. Amen? I can tell you many more testimonies. Many, many more. I don't know why I said that. It's for somebody's healing. For somebody's healing. Hallelujah. There's five people I want you to step up here that are sold out. Don't stand up here unless you mean what you mean. I'd rather I die more than once, so I don't mind going for Christ. If 